How do astronauts exercise in space? Right now your muscles and bones are working against gravity. Even if you don't exercise as much as you should, you're still pushing against the force just to stay upright. But when you get to space, your body is relieved of the effort, and quickly starts turning into a noodle. So how do astronauts stay fit in space? They can't simply lift some dumbbells. To minimize the physiological equipment, there's a space treadmill named Colbert, CEVTS, a stationary bike, and ARED, a device that simulates weightlifting. Even with the intensive fitness regime they must follow while working aboard the ISS, however, those who spend long durations in space return to Earth with muscular atrophy, cardiovascular deconditioning, and bone loss, that can be difficult to reverse. In fact, after 180 days in space muscular strength can decrease by anywhere from 11 to 17 percent, muscular endurance by about 10 percent, and bone mineral density by 2 to 7 percent, according to NASA. Conversely, Connor Measures System instructor Robert Tweedy noted that recovery can be faster in space thanks to less lactic acid buildup. Astronauts' fitness could once only be measured before and after ISS missions, said Lori Plout Snyder, lead exercise physiology scientist at NASA. But new ultrasound and panoramic imaging technologies make it possible for crew members to take their own in-flight muscle measurements, letting their terrestrial trainers better monitor their fitness and alter personalized workout plans. Currently a study called Sprint is evaluating the effectiveness of alternating between days of high dash intensity, low volume exercising, and days of continuous aerobic exercise. Although individual data cannot be discussed, Sprint is proving to be more successful than anticipated in minimizing the loss of bone, muscle, and cardiovascular function, says Plout Snyder. The data could help develop and optimize exercise countermeasures to prevent fitness deterioration when humans embark on longer duration missions to the Moon or Mars, the latter requiring at least six months in transit. It could also help earthbound humans improve exercise practices to advance muscle, bone, and cardiovascular health, particularly in bedridden patients and elders. PC Magazine flew to Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas, and got a close-up look at the three pieces of equipment astronauts use to stay fit on board the ISS. ARED Advanced Resistive Exercise Device was delivered to the ISS by Space Shuttle Mission SDS-126 in November 2008. Designed for weightlifting in a weightless environment, it consists of two evacuated, pistol-driven canisters with a flywheel mechanism. Astronauts can configure the machine to perform exercises like deadlifts, squats, biceps curls, and calf raises. An astronaut meets resistance as he or she pulls the rods, similar to pulling back a syringe. The angle of the piston determines the length of the rod and thus the weight of the load, up to 600 pounds. The constant load more closely resembles free weights than the curved load of NASA's older band-resistance weightlifting machines did. There are However, no spotters in space. In 2009, when NASA launched a contest to name Node 3, an ISS module, political satirist Stephen Colbert lobbied viewers of his Colbert Report show to nominate the name Colbert which won. NASA overruled the poll, however, and chose tranquility. As a consolation NASA named the treadmill Colbert Combined Operational Load-Bearing External Resistance Treadmill, and a picture of its namesake is mounted in front of the ISS treadmill.
It sits on a vibration isolation system designed to let astronauts run without vibrating delicate microgravity science experiments in adjacent labs. The treadmill is tightly incorporated into astronauts' workout regimens but in order to use it, they must be harnessed in place. In April 2007, Expedition 14 flight engineer Sunita Sunyi Williams was issued bid number 14,000 by the Boston Athletic Associated, and ran the Boston Marathon in orbit, 210 miles above her fellow runners. Williams finished in 4.23.10, and circled the Earth twice, while running as fast as 8 mph, and flying more than 5 miles per second. CEVTS cycle ergometer with vibration isolations and stabilization system is the closest thing you'll get to a stationary bike in space. CEVIS doesn't have a seat because astronauts can't sit in zero gravity. The bike in the image has a seat for training on Earth. Instead, astronauts snap their shoes to the pedals and tether themselves to the bike with a seat belt in order to cycle upright and obtain the aerobic and cardiovascular benefits. They can adjust the workload and change speeds to hit their target heart rates. Astronaut Doug Willock explained that it can take weeks to get used to cycling in a microgravity environment. CEVIS also sits on a vibration isolation system to reduce the vibrations on the structure of the